Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Now often when working with Snowflake we've got a bunch of objects like store procedures and functions which are working with our data, applying business logic, transforming data, ingesting it onto our platform. But we're always going to need to be able to log what's happening, especially if something goes wrong, so we can be proactively monitoring these logs to take action to make sure that everything runs as expected. Now in the past, We've had to rely on third party tools or write our own custom in-house solutions to do that. But more recently, Snowflake have released a feature called Event Tables, which allows you to set up an event table, attach it to a Snowflake account, and then point your objects to that event table to log information. And then you can use it like any other table in Snowflake. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what that looks like, and I'll give you a short basic demonstration so you can do this for yourselves. My name's Adam Morton, and I've written a couple of books on Snowflake. I've also been lucky enough to speak in front of my peers on a number of occasions. I've lived and worked in the UK, Europe, and Australia during my career. And today, I'm on a mission to help as many people as I can fulfill their career potential by adding as much value as I can around data strategy and modern cloud data platforms. So I'm straight into Snowflake for this demo, and I'm going to run through a bit of code that shows you how these event tables work. So I'm going to create or replace my database, which is called logging. I'm then going to create a schema in the database called audit. Then crucially, this is the simple statement that sets up an event table. Notice it's a standard create or replace table syntax with the word event in there, but I don't specify any columns of data types. And that's because these come out of the box of Snowflake. You can't customize them. It's a standard generic set of columns. Uh, you will see very soon. So we'll create that table. And then another kind of key point that's unique to event tables is you need to associate with that, that event table with your account. So I'm using an alter account statement to set the event table to the name of that table I've just created. Next, now I've got a table in Snowflake. Well, you can do anything pretty much that you can do with a normal table, such as create a stream to that. So I'm going to create an append only stream to this event table. Standard syntax, no difference. And if you're interested in finding more about streams, you can check my video up here. Um, now, if I have a look at the table, here we go. So it's currently empty, of course, but here's my defined, um, predefined set of columns and data types, which I can't control. This is what um, how the table looks when you first set it up. Next, I'm going to create a very basic um, store procedure called login order SP event. You can see in here that I'm just going to select the top 10 from some Snowflake sample data. Now in here, I can actually have these um, system dollar log info, log error and log warning. Notice I'm actually creating the message that I want to pass through in here um, as well. So that's what's going to end up in the table. These different levels of login you can then specify, which I'll show you in a second. And you can influence how verbose that login is or not. So let's create a simple store procedure. First of all, I'm going to alter the procedure here, and I'm going to set the log level to info. This means that anything at info level and above, which includes warning and error, will be logged to the table. So we'll set the log level. We'll call the store procedure and pass in a, a varchar of test. That's executed and ran. We'll select from the stream that we've set up, and that takes a couple of moments. I had to pause the video during that time. You can see we've got these free records coming in and that's using the Snowflake API to push those records in. We can see here we've got our severity text, info, error, warning, and there's the value that we've passed in, passed in with the concatenation of the executed error or warning with our message that we've passed into the store procedure, all shown as inserts in the stream log. Uh, if we look into the actual table itself, the event table, we've got those three records in there. So let's go back and just change that log level now to error. That means that anything of a uh, severity less than error won't actually uh, make it in to the stream or the event table. We'll execute the procedure again. And then I'll pause the video, wait a couple of minutes until the stream picks up that, um, that record. There should only be one record this time relating to error. And that will also end up in the event table. Okay, so just unpause the video. You can see I've now got four records in here. It does take a few minutes, as you can see, to come through. Um, we go along to the right-hand side. We've got severity text, 
error. Now, this is how you log events. You can also capture trace streams as well from um, your Snowpark API calls. Um, but this is just a basic way of doing it. I wanted to show you real quick. Um, and that's pretty much it. If we look at the event table, there's our four records. Um, so you can apply this to all of your objects and store procedures as well as code in Snowpark where you want to trace, get, capture the trace and log that to a common table within your environment. Snowflake start to take steps towards making that easier and more consistent for you to manage. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. New videos come in very soon. Maybe you've been frustrated by being stuck in a dead end job in your company or your employer hasn't necessarily invested in you and you're stuck working with on-premise systems. Well, this is exactly why I designed this course, this program, Master and Snowflake. Um, my members join me and have typically got, got 10 to 15 years experience in IT and data specifically. They've often got a lot of skills and experience that they've poured time and effort into over the years and they want to be able to leverage that to the best degree. So they come to me, they're often quite confused about where to start. There's so many overlapping um, technologies out there. There's so many different buzzwords and I want to really help um, you and these people cut through all of that marketing hype and really get a good understanding of how to design and deploy solutions for the cloud. I choose Snowflake because I find it really um, empowering to work with. It's really easy to get up and running. and um, It's got a lot of good features and concepts as well. If you come in from an on-premise environment, it will be really uh, game-changing to you in terms of your day-to-day -day role. So I'm basically packaged up everything I've learned using Snowflake since 2017 across a range of implementations. Um, I've now got a number of recipes, if you like, that allow you to take the out-of-the-box capabilities of Snowflake, package them up to address real-world business challenges. This will save you time and effort, all of the kind of mistakes and everything that I had to make initially to get to this point, you will be able to kind of fast-track yourself to that. So as part of the program itself, I provide all of the uh, hands-on demos the code I use, the code templates, and the patterns I use with my enterprise scale clients. You also get access to a exclusive members only group to get expert advice and share knowledge, not only around Snowflake, um, although we do have a number of um, obviously discussion points around Snowflake itself, and that could also include certification or interview with guidance and advice, but we also include, include any tools and technologies around the modern data platform space whether that be DBT, Matillion, Fivetran, Stitch, Alation, Atlan, Power BI, Tableau, you name it. You know, we, we've all got um, different experiences we can bring to the table. I also conduct live 60-minute group coaching calls, which are completely optional. And um, people from around the, the world turn up to those and ask me any questions, whether that be around technology, whether that be around data strategy um, or architecture advice and guidance. Your investment in yourself in terms of getting into this program will continue to pay um, dividends to you because obviously Snowflake is, is changing every single month and all of those updates are fed back into the program periodically over time. So it's all being designed by myself from the ground up. It's very practical, it's very hands-on, um, provide in-depth background, not just around the theory but with real-world case studies and in practical hands-on activities within each module. So if you're interested, this is what it looks like in terms of the course breakdown and the structure. Um, you can apply at the moment. We've opened the, the membership up for new applications. There's a link in the video description below. Please hit that link, um, apply to join. I'd love to have you as part of the program. The key thing for me is making sure you're the right fit and you're going to get the most amount of value from it. Thanks so much for listening. All the best on your Snowflake journey.